Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's Market Wrap. So I am still not back in Philly, but I'm in very hot Las Vegas. We came straight here from vacation in Colorado. Me and Mitchell made the trip over to Vegas. We started with the IWJG show. It was a great, strong show. And now we're spending a few days exhibiting at the Antique Jewelry and Watch Show. It's great to be back at a bigger show, seeing lots of old friends in the jewelry business, and also all those watch dealers. So this week, there were three really cool watches that came across my desk. And the first one we're going to talk about is an IWC Portuguese Perpetual Calendar. Now, this is the 5021-13, and it's a very rare variant. It's a stainless steel version, has a beautiful black dial, and it was made originally for Cellini in a limited edition of only 25 pieces. So it's something we never see come across our desk. Love to have that in the collection. So the second watch we're gonna talk about is a Frank Mueller. And I love the early Frank Mueller's. Now this is a 5850 and the Vegas edition. Seemed appropriate now that we're hanging out in Vegas for a couple of days, but it's a cool blue dial and it's got a roulette wheel right in the middle. Kind of one of the sillier complications you'll ever see, but I absolutely love this watch. The third piece we're gonna talk about is a Richard Mule. Now we don't talk a lot about Richard Mule on Market Wrap. It's kind of a crazy market. It's super hot right now but it's not something we trade in all the time, but I did get an awesome piece in. It's the 6702, it's the ultra thin, it's a limited edition made for Wade Van Nickerk. It's a South African player, just a beautiful watch. I love the green coloring. I love the fact that it sits great on the wrist. I think it's really some of the best of what Richard Meal has done. So being back at a show is a great feeling. There is not a better way to get a feel for the market than going to shows, meeting with old friends, discussing the market. And every person, every dealer, every retailer I've spoke to have had the same response to the old question, how's business? Everyone is saying the watch business has never been stronger. And the only concern they have is not being able to source enough merchandise to fill clients' requests. Now, the spike in prices has continued through the summer, and without an extraordinary global event, I don't think it's going to stop this year. Now, this rise in prices comes from a number of places. Now, obviously, Switzerland was shut down for three or four months, which did disrupt supply for a short time, but I don't believe that's the driver of this market. All the manufacturers nowadays are producing at higher levels than they were last year, and distribution has gotten back to normal. The spike in prices and shortages is truly demand driven. Social media, flippers, and over retail pricing in the secondary market has created a feeding frenzy and people are trading and profiting in some cases handsomely. They are more apt to continue buying and trading as they're not taking that traditional haircut we used to see in the market. The ability to buy watches, wear them, trade them in in an extremely liquid market at little or no loss has created more active collectors with less and less fear of making mistakes. We are seeing clients who used to buy a watch once a year, once every two years, now becoming serial traders. They're getting back into the market because they could buy a watch, wear it for three or four months, trade it back in, and not really take a hit at all, and in a lot of cases lately, actually make a profit. So without this fear of taking a big haircut, more and more of our collectors are becoming really active in the market, which is driving even more demand. It's also putting more goods back into the market and it's just feeding itself. Now, when they have a market that's gotten this strong, prices have gone up so high, it's very hard not to take advantage of some of these prices. I've seen a lot of guys culling the collection, taking a profit where they see, hey, I bought this watch for 50, it's now worth 70. Suddenly it's really hard not to take advantage of that. And obviously it makes it easier to trade into a new watch makes it bark it even more fun. With all this trading and all this growth and demand, I really don't see this market slowing down. And especially going into the fourth quarter, I think we could even see it strengthen. Now, the other thing I read this week, which actually made me a little sad, is Bukhara announced that they are officially changing all the Torno stores now to be called Bukhara. Now, this might not seem like a big deal to most people, but when I was young and just starting in this business, Tourneau was huge, and they really made a mark in the watch business. They were the first big retailer to primarily sell watches. 
Most other stores were jewelry stores that had watches on the side, but they really went into this multi-brand strategy that nobody had tried before. They took full page ads in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and really created in the United States the real understanding of the watch market and really helped it grow. Now, while this was expected, I feel like with all the big corporations now coming into the watch business, we may actually lose what I used to love about the business, and that's the people and the passion. Now, when I was growing up, it was Bob Wexler who was Tourneau. It was Leon at Cellini. It was Danny at Govbergs. It was Rudy at Wempy. It was Roberto at Manfredi, myself at Betteridge. We are all building watch businesses and relationships with collectors, serving as advisors and opinion makers. I hope we get a younger generation come in to help watch guys who will step into this role and really go onto the front lines and not just work in corporate boardrooms making decisions about the watch business instead of being on the front line meeting clients. I also hope that the independent retailers that help build this business, help develop some of these smaller brands, continue to thrive and provide an environment where it's actually fun to go shop. Now, shopping on the internet is great. We obviously do a huge part of our business online, but there's something special about being able to go to a watch store, see a guy who loves watches, have him talk about his favorites, you talk about yours, instead of going to a chain store that's owned by a big corporation that lacks the passion that we all share. I really hope this trend doesn't continue too much. I hope we can still have some of these great independent stores, and I hope we get young guys coming in who still want to be passionate about the watch business. So that's this week's Market Wrap. We hope to see you again next week.